What are the advantages and disadvantages of aquaponics compared to kind of what you're doing now, the traditional farming? Welcome to the Pursuit of Coconuts. My name is Polin, and we are working on building a global social enterprise to combat food insecurity, corruption, and support local farmers. Starting here in the Philippines, in the center of Visayas, we have built the first large-scale aquaponic farms here in Bohol. Our goal was always to inspire the locals, bringing new technologies, new ways of doing things, not just in aquaponic farming, but regenerative farming and sustainable farming methods. In this episode, we teamed up with Kinabuhi Farms. They are an organic, non-profit agricultural project operated by Ideal Philippines. Aaron, aka Tuki Drake, founded the farm in 2020 and his team has been working on it ever since. Their goal is to provide healthy produce to the IDEA employees and their families, especially after the pandemic. So if you don't know what IDEA Philippines is, check them out. They are focused on the deaf population, so hard to hearing, sometimes mute, and sometimes a lot of the locals don't even know why until an older age that their children are that way. And sometimes there's abuse or scolding or just a misunderstanding of their condition. So this organization is well known throughout the whole island and people go to them as a great resource. They also resource families through their social enterprises. They've got a hotel, they've got a cafe, and they're into a lot of different social enterprises focused on the deaf in the whole. So going back to their farm, their farm is led by strong farmers that are local here, and they also employ a lot of the deaf employees. Getting up to speed to who they are and what they did, we decided to go visit them at their farm. All right, farm visit day, and today we are visiting Kinabuhai Farms. Kinabuhi. Kinabuhi. <laughs> okay, so what does this mean? It means life. Life. Life Farm established 40 years ago. A bunch of stuff and this is their three hectare. So that's about six acres of farm that helps support the deaf community. So we're going to check this out. We're excited to see what they've got going on. And just the community that they serve is an amazing cause. We wanted to learn more of their traditional farm and also how and what really works. They do have a section that has hydroponics. So we wanted to see if they were profitable, how much they're producing, and what type of impact they were making in the community. We met up with Athena for the day and also Kuya Noel. He is the main head farmer of the place. Just great people for a great cause. The deaf usually have a hard entry into society with jobs that do not serve them well and also not having the educational system tailored for their needs. Now, Idea Philippines and the founder has done a great job of creating schools, medical help with hearing aids and more, and also job opportunities. And through the farm, they were able to hire so many people. Now, the question would be, is the farm sustainable in this social enterprise for them? They do have a cafe that uses a lot of the organic vegetables and produce that comes off this farm. The other part is they're able to donate a lot of the food to the families in need. When the farm was started, um, part of the harvest were given to the vulnerable families that um, lost their jobs, especially the deaf. Yeah. And then for now, um, we sell the produce to the restaurants that we have in the Diamond and Garden Cafe also and to the employees. Gotcha. Okay. Not only will we be able to visit their farm, but they were able to visit our farm. And we were able to kind of compare notes, see the different technologies, and see what we both can improve on. So this is iron sharpening iron in the agricultural world here on the island. What? So this is raised bread you just dig here. and. <laughs> rice before. Oh, rice before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Morning said cuts basin sa unang ah. cuts proper. So ang level sa tong tubig diri, basta rin ni season dari gitaman. Ah. Oh, ba ni amo i box kay. Ah. Now the good thing is that they made the mounds, they made the trellises, they were growing vegetables and some of it was growing there. The hard part is the soil retention. But being built on an area that used to be a rice farm, the soil holds and drains water very inconsistently. When it rains, it doesn't drain fast enough and it piles up. And as the soil drains, it takes a few days and even a week. So then the planters had to be built high enough so that it wouldn't get flooded and destroy their crops. 
Kuya, does is do you think because it's a rice uh, field before that is healthy dirt, like it's healthy soil for the plants, do they grow well, or is it harder because? Well, it's yes, rice? sir. Maayog um, yuta, healthy ang yuta. Abli malang kay gahi siya. So this is a lot of clay, I think. Oh, ano sir, ano? Clay. So there's a lot of clay, and you can kind of see how rocky it is um, in the soil. So there's a lot of soil development that they have to do. So they have uh, vermicasting, and they pile the debris in here so that it can break down, and they have to keep these beds <laughs> to keep the soil in place. Since it used to be an old rice farm, there's not a diverse set of nutrients or organic matter that had been built up. A lot of it is just mud and soil and silt, and also in the rice fields, they usually just cut the rice and the weeds and just let it rot and do its thing and decompose there. So this soil may not be filled with the best nutrients for the plants. So there was a lot of things that they had to add to this. So it was great that they were producing and getting produce out of this. The hard part is the maintenance with the rains, the floods, the bugs and the soil having to get developed so there's a lot of digging, turnover, tilling just meant that there is a lot of challenges. It's great that it produces but the manpower to produce what it was producing out of this farm just wasn't efficient enough to call it a sustainable social enterprise. As we headed to the second part of the farm and I chatted with Guyo Noel, the farmer, I realized a couple of things that he was passionate about what he was doing, that he cared about the people he was working with, and that there was a lot of challenges going on on the farm. And I think the pressure of making sure that their output is more than their financial input was one of the biggest things on his mind. The second farm was larger, more organized and had sections and it also had the greenhouse which had the hydroponic farm. Now hydroponics is quite simple you just need a low electricity pump pumping water consistently through pipes feeding it through a series of layers that then have the growth median in pots or cups and then they grow simple lettuce and this system was working for them. The pluses and minus of the simple hydroponic system is that they continually had to buy nutrients for their plants and also upkeeping the greenhouse, building it with bamboo and simple plastic was one of those things that they had to keep monitoring, fixing and maintaining. And they had a chicken area, but it wasn't a main focus. So it wasn't a main supply of eggs or protein or chickens being sold. They just had that as a trial and test and trying to figure out what they should do with it. So we walked around the farm, checked some more stuff out, and I really appreciated their effort and not giving up on the farm. Now here's the crazy part. One thing that I would never have thought about, monkeys by the neighboring hills. The monkeys are coming from that mountain over there and they're coming and eating the fruit. So now we've got competition on who's harvesting what and who's eating what. So not only do you have to deal with the elements, but you've got to deal with the local animals. And you can't do anything about that. This is their land, this is their territory. We're here just borrowing it. Can you imagine monkeys as a pest? So all in all, beautiful farm, lots of work being put in, lots of care, lots of passion, and lots of challenges. So now we go to our farm. A few weeks later, they were able to make some time and they were so interested and curious about this aquaponic farm and what the heck does it do? We showed them how the system works, how the pumps work, the purpose of the fish, the outcome of the plants and vegetables, and just how it all came together. And they were very impressed. Lots of discussion, lots of questions went back and forth. And here are some of their responses. After seeing the aquaponic farm, their attitudes changed. They kind of looked at it and said, wow, this is actually fun. The labor doesn't look too hard compared to what we're doing. And this is actually something I can see myself doing even as a hobbyist. So more so creating a job around the aquaponic farm would be inspiring 
to a younger generation that is interested in technology, efficiency, and using the modern ways of doing things. Yeah. The new generation in the cities already, Manila, things like that, they're starting to build on top of the roof, in their, close to their house, because they enjoy it, but then they're not the ones that it benefits, they just enjoy it because it works good and they like the idea. But the farmers over here and the people in Bohol will benefit the most, because we're in the province still. Yeah. My goal is that the farmers here, if they, if they learn how to farm efficiently, even if it's not aquaponic, but just farm more organic and supply a lot of the resorts here, they'll make a good livelihood already. And then they can build a small aquaponic system just for their family so that they eat healthier. We can save a lot of water. I mean, you're talking about 70 to 90% of water savings. In aquaponics, plants grow a lot faster, up to 50% times as fast, and you can also plant about four times in the amount of space. And this is compared to traditional farming in regular soil. Isla Eden also has some really cool livestock. We have a pig pen that we created using simple scaffolding and filling up the pen with rice hull. How we use local materials to really get creative and not kill our bank account. So that was one thing that they were really impressed with looking at it as an opportunity for themselves to do efficient livestock farming and create different tiers of farming and methods to create income, more efficiently creating income for their social enterprise, which would support more of their cause. What did you find interesting about the aquaponic system? Una, uh, naka na intriga mi sa aquaponic system tungod kay uh, among nakita nga diha sa aquaponic system labing sayon siya e kumpara sa naanda nato nga mga buhat diha sa panguma. What are the advantages and disadvantages of aquaponics compared to kind of what you're doing now the traditional farming? Bintaha o bisbintaha sa aquaponic system ngadto sa traditional farming mao nga sa aquaponic system makita nato nga gi gamyan ang kahago sa mga farmer pinagi sa maong sistema nga mao ang aquaponic system kay ang traditional farming nagkinahanglan siya og igoigong manpower nagkinahanglan ta og cultivation sa yuta nga dili na mahitabo sa aquaponic system with food prices rising, do you think aquaponics can help with the food insecurity problem that we might have here in Bohol? That kung ikatabang, kung maghisgot ta o food security, tungod kay ang aquaponics system, di padali niya ang paglambo sa mga tanom, nga atong ginatanom, nga maoy kuhaan na to o tuburan sa pagkaon. One thing that I appreciated about this visit the most was that we were two people from two very different places doing the same thing, farming, in two very different ways. So we built a great bond and we look forward to what's to come. Definitely going to share some more ideas and help them develop some efficient ways to get their farm to profitability. And with that, they would be able to use that to bless their community, bless the lives of the deaf that they serve, and also bless the families that surround them. Mahi mo mami ni makapangay mi nyo idea kung musugod na mi sa amo dito sa among farm. Yeah, we would definitely go there and then look at the land first, see what's available, and then see what's going to be best and what's going to be the most cost efficient too because what you have already like the area where the fish pond is, you can use that still. Shout out sa tanang pursuit of coconut. There is a lubuk buhol. Ah. Salamat. Thank you. Salamat po. Salamat. What a great day with visitors, but when you have a sun like this, it's always a great day. A curse. No, I'm joking. It's always a blessing with the family here, but we had a great visit from Kinabuhi Farm. 
they came here to look at the newer technology and also get inspired and boy I'll tell you what they were very inspired now the question is how do they implement parts of it or some of it or an aquaponic farm on their farm how do we inspire them to look at new ways of farming whether it's ra raised bed farming poly tunnel farming or just kind of using the resources so this is a team effort on this island if you're a farmer hit us up we want to work with you guys some way or another one way or another if you're not a farmer but you appreciate them or you appreciate eating which should be all you guys please support the pursuit of coconuts our journey this is isla eden our aquaponic farm that's a social enterprise that's going to be a global enterprise bringing apothecary goods and agricultural goods developed here and innovated here made here in the philippines and brought to you around the world so we're looking forward to this partnership with the farmers but also with you guys and your support follow us on all of our platforms every like every comment every watch really helps us propel this dream forward